Welcome everybody to Istanbul. It's your travel friend Herman and in today's video I'm going to go over some of the places that I visited in Istanbul. This is going to be a part one video because I'm going to make two videos of the attractions that I saw while in Istanbul. Huh. Just arrived at my hotel here in the old city. And right there you see a cat. You see them everywhere. I love it. <laughs> And because the city has essentially two histories, the Roman history as well as the Turkish history, I'm basically separating this out into two videos. And in this one, the ones that I'm going to be going over, Turkish historical attractions that were really built primarily after the fall of Constantinople. My very first stop during my trip was actually the Sultan Ahmed Mosque, or also known as the Blue Mosque, right there in the heart of old Istanbul and was built in the early 1600s. One of the first things you'll notice is that you're greeted with the beautiful geometric courtyard with its six minarets. And it glistens in the sun. This is just part of the uh, outdoor courtyard area of the Blue Mosque. Uh, and it's, you can see the blue domes, although that's actually not the name of why this mosque is, is called the Blue Mosque. It's because uh, actually the, the interior has a lot of blue. So. you're going to be greeted once again with a very artistic interior, very ornate, uh, with everything in, uh, like always, in a geometric pattern, with beautiful ceilings, and you also see a lot of the uh, Arabic scriptures throughout the mosque. At 12 they have prayer, so uh, right now it's still open to the public for tourists, and it is magnificent, beautiful like the geometric patterns on everything. So right here next to the Blue Mosque is the, is the location where the old Roman Hippodrome used to be, which where all the chariot race, races took place. Like a lot of other Roman cities of the, of the empire, uh, it, Constantinople never had a gladiatorial arena. Uh, whereas in most other cities in the, in the empire they would, but but this this one because Constantinople or Istanbul how it is now, it, it was found as a Christian city and uh, Christians never uh, condoned or really wanted gladiatorial games in, in the city, so that's why it just never became a thing here in the cities. However, uh, chariot races that's totally fine. I mean it's just racing, so no one has to die. I mean of course I'm sure people you know got seriously injured or died during the races, but it wasn't that was never the intention. That was more just see who's the, who's the fastest. You know, just like any uh, NASCAR or Formula One race today. And you also here you have an, an Egyptian obelisk. This is the column for the, uh, for the hip drum. Right here. Pretty tall. But it, it is beautiful here though. Beautiful, beautiful place. The Blue Mosque is right there, kind of towering over, towering over everything. It's beautiful, beautiful. Uh, does that, for a very first ever time inside a mosque, which is kind of funny because, you know, the very first mosque happens to be one of the, like, one of the prettiest, uh, you know, like, well, maybe not necessarily the prettiest, I'm sure there may be others, but this one is particularly old and it's just very, very famous, so, yeah, pretty cool. And you also want to come back here during the evening hours because the same area where the Hagia Sophia is, is also where the Blue Mosque is, and you'll see the buildings turn into a nice red color. And right after, I headed over to Topkepi Palace, which is one of the Sultan's palaces that are still in Istanbul from during the Ottoman Empire era. After walking past the beautiful gate, the first thing you'll see is, of course, the large courtyard, or I should say courtyards, because there are multiple of it in the palace. But past them, you're also going to notice that a lot of the palace has almost essentially mini museums within within them. But a lot of them are usually imperial galleries and collections that were kept during the Ottoman Empire era. Unfortunately, some of these collections I was not able to take a video of because you are not allowed to. You are allowed to take pictures, however. Did not expect this at all. Actually, get a nice view of the Asian side. 
and of the streets. And as you can see in the video, I had no idea the palace would offer such good views of the Bosphorus and the Golden Horn. And during my time there, I happened to go probably on the most perfect day with the perfect weather. And it's cool because you still see the walls. Here you see the Golden Horn, which forms the peninsula of the old city of Constantinople and also now Istanbul. I also recommend checking out the harem, which forms a pretty big part of the palace. I had no idea that a harem could be this ornate, so it's actually definitely worth uh, checking a look. It's almost a palace within the palace. Coming out of the palace, you see all the uh, see all the uh, old buildings. After leaving the palace, I walked through the beautiful neighborhoods and headed over to the Turkish and Islamic Arts Museum. One of the main reasons is because I wanted to see their collection of rugs as well as very ornate handwritten manuscripts. The very first thing that came to mind is how long did it take to make this rug by hand? But the masterpiece was this insanely detailed hand woven silk rug showing old Constantinople. Truly, the video does not do it justice. The following day, I headed over to the Grand Bazaar in Old Istanbul. And here, even though I don't shop, I still recommend going here because this is the oldest continuously open mall in the world and was open in around the early 1600s to revitalize the economy of the city. It's actually a lot more well lit than I thought. Another tourist attraction that it really isn't on the brochure is the Galata Bridge. Even though the bridge itself is not a huge attraction, I think it should be because it gives you really good views of not only the Golden Horn, it gives you views of the of old Istanbul as well as the north part of the city, which has Galata Tower as well as the ports. So it's a very Instagrammable spot or WeChat for my Chinese audience. Definitely when you can take a ferry. Say I went from the European side to the Asian side on the ferry. I'm gonna go to, the, then my next stop is gonna be another palace. Uh, and I'm doing it all by boat because I wanna see the Bosphorus and it's the views you get are really good and cheap.
uh, because this area is far from the uh, center of the city, especially the old city. It's even though it's touristy, it doesn't feel as touristy because there aren't any, there's barely any people here. And but it's it's really beautiful, and it's located at the narrowest point of the Bosphorus Strait. And uh, this palace uh, that I'm going to go to is called the Kuchuksu Palace. I, I believe it. I believe that's how you you pronounce it. But I'll still leave it in the description if anybody wants to to go to it. it looks beautiful. So. Another um, Ottoman um, Sultanate palace. Pretty. This main entrance here, it comes out right to this one, which is run at Bosphorus, right to the waterfront. It's beautiful. A lot of seagulls today. Especially though, since this is the narrowest point of the Bosphorus Straits that connect or that separate uh, Asia and Europe, it, you get to see a lot of the shipping really, really up close. Because it, it is quite narrow and it actually provides a big bottleneck for shipping because of it. Even that big oil tanker right there, I mean, you, you can only really have one ship of that size coming through at any one time. The water here is so blue. I mean, it is like just nice, nice blue. I love it. And one thing about this one is that this palace was not a residential palace. It was actually, it was actually really just a more of a guest palace to, to receive dignitaries and um, and other figures. Uh, so because of it, there aren't any rooms like you would see in other palaces. So that's kind of uh, strange that that I thought I hadn't seen a palace like this that is literally just for guests. And not for actual, you know, uh, living in at all. Yeah, it's the really pretty ferry terminal here. You got the palace, and here in front, it's actually nice and green. next stop I made was to the military museum. I certainly couldn't leave Istanbul without going to it. I like that at the, here at the very entrance you see the large Von Bar canyons that, you know, that tore down the walls of Constantinople right there. It's actually, yeah, it is pretty big. This is the Ottoman Empire at its greatest extent. And especially after going to the museums in the UK, Australia, and New Zealand, it's really nice to see a museum that covers the other side of World War I. As well, I like their exhibitions on the fall of Constantinople. My final palace is Dolmabache Palace. It's another uh, sultanate uh, residential palace. It's got that beautiful Ottoman clock tower. See, unlike Topkapi, hey, this one is right on the waterfront. Uh, Topkapi kind of looks over the waterfront, so it's a little different. But this is this one is definitely bigger. I feel like the entrance to Domovaci Palace, well, the to the main building. Of course, you can have this beautiful, perfectly white cat here, right in the palace. This one is definitely I feel like more opulent than Topkapi. I love how it has the gate to the waterfront right there. A lot of people are taking photos. I'm not, not really gonna do that, but I'm uh, also standing so uh, with the shade on my face. I lost count of how many doors there are just like this. That and the, the tour of Dome uh, One thing is that you cannot take pictures inside, but you can definitely take a lot of pictures outside, which is a lot of, a lot of people are doing. 
uh, especially you know all the um, you know all those uh, pictures for uh, for Instagram. I and mean, this is like a super Instagramable spot. I mean, you you cannot get almost, you almost cannot get a better Instagramable spot than than this place. After going to the palace, I highly recommend just walking around the city. Uh, just get lost, just check out the buildings, the streets, and see what it has to offer. Here, this is uh, Taksim Square. You have the mosque right there. Of course, the Istanbul Instagramable sign. Statue of uh, Kemal Ataturk, which is the nation's founder, the Republic. And to my surprise, a Christmas tree. I did not expect that. And then my hotel went back. And a lot of uh, Christmas decorations. And thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, it. Remember that this is not an exhaustive video. I will be doing a part two of Istanbul. I, I thought it'd be better to just break it up into two because I, you know, the large history of the city, it, I think warrants separating out into two videos. So don't forget to leave a like and subscribe and turn on your notifications for my upcoming videos. Until next time, bye.